Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril Paints. You asked for it and we're finally delivering. Today we are showing you how to paint Mordor Urukai, the ferocious guardians of Kirith Ungol, along with the host of orcs that were there during the time of the War of the Ring. Only undone by the introduction of a hobbit, but that doesn't take away from their ferocity. As always, the model was mold line cleaned and trimmed of any flash. This is a metal model, so make sure all the flash is gone. Uh, the mold lines will be slightly more challenging to get rid of, but take your time and try not to scrape away any of the detail. The model was then affixed to the slotter base using super glue. Sometimes the pegs don't fit snugly enough, uh, but if you need to, just bend the peg slightly and it should fit in no problem. At which point the base was then covered in fine modeling sand. And once this was dry, the whole model was sprayed chaos black. These models are really good fun to paint and really look as stunning on the tabletop when they're all done. The best thing we found about these models is that the paint scheme is interchangeable across every sculpt, so you end up with an army that can feel truly unique on the tabletop just by swapping the blacks and the browns and sometimes the blues around to really give you a unique looking army which still ties in really well with the aesthetic of Kirith Ungol. But without further ado, please sit back, relax and enjoy today's video. Base colours. We're going to start base coating the Uruk skin with a mix of Dark Reaper and Nagaroth Knight. Make sure you catch all the exposed skin areas, particularly around the arms and the backs of the legs. Now we're going to use a mix of Iron Warriors and Abaddon Black and apply a base coat to all the metalwork and armour on the model. This will provide a nice, deep, dark base tone for that orcish Uruk armour that we want. The majority of the tunic was painted with a mix of Thondia Brown, Dryad Bark and Abaddon Black. The benefit with these models is that the grey and the black areas can be interchanged across various sculpts to really give your army a unique feel. Now we're going to use a mix of Abaddon Black with a small amount of Incubi Darkness in it and base coat the rest of the cloth on the model. Finally, all the straps, the sword hilt and all the hair on the model was painted with a mix of storm vermin fur and Abaddon black. Being careful here not to bleed out onto any of the other tunic base coats, but it's not the end of the world if you do. He is, after all, a Nuruk. Uruk skin. We're going to add a small amount of Incubi Darkness to the previous Dark Reaper and Nagaroth Knight mix and thin down with Lamia Medium, apply this as a manual shade into the deepest recesses of all the flesh detail. Once this is dry and you're happy with how this looks, we're going to blend together the recess shade and the original base coat with a diluted wash of Nulm Oil. Now we're going to start blocking in the flesh layers by adding some Fenrisian Grey to the previous Dark Reaper Nagaroth Night mix, leaving the wash and the recess shade showing in the deepest recesses and really trying to capture that snarly, gnarled look on the Uruk's face in particular.
Once you're happy with how your initial flesh blocking looks, we're going to start adding small amounts of deep kin flesh in small increments and to continue to layer up the face, keeping the highlights tighter and thinner the further we layer this up. By the time you finish your layering stages here, your mix should contain no more than about 50% deepkin flesh to avoid overwhelming the tones of the blue and purple from the base and layer mixes. One thing to keep in mind, he's an orc, not an elf, so we don't need to take the skin tone too bright with our highlights. For the final extreme highlight, we're going to add all throne grey to the overall mix and apply this very sparingly just to the uppermost areas and most pronounced details of the face and all the skin detail. Just to give him that ghostly, gaunt appearance synonymous with the Mordor Urukai. The eye recesses were then picked up with Abaddon Black and two dots of Pallid Witch Flesh were put either side to create the eyes. At this point as well we also filled in the teeth with Ushabdi Bone. Armour. Now we're going to apply a thorough wash to all the armour with a three part mix of Athonian Camo Shade, Agrax Thurve Shade and Lamia Medium. We don't want to dilute this too much because we really want the green and brown tones to show through on the armour but also in the same breath don't want to overload it too much so if you want to apply a few thinner washes to get a good nice beaten gnarly tone to the armour then make sure you do so. Once the original wash is dry we're going to tone down everything uniformly now with a wash of null oil and again slightly diluted so we don't end up overwhelming the tone of the armour by making it too dark and too black. Finally, once you're happy with how your armour is looking and it's sufficiently grubbed up and orked up, we're going to apply an extreme edge highlight with Iron Breaker. And we're going to apply this extremely carefully and literally just focus on the absolute edges of all the armor plating to give it that real sharp, brutal look, which is synonymous with Orcs and Urukai armor. You want to be as careful as you can because it'd be really hard to try and match the tone of the armor for the highlight if we do bleed over onto the, uh, the rest of the armor plating. So take your time and apply this as carefully and precisely as you can here for the best overall look. Brown tunics. We're going to increase the amount of Abaddon Black in the original base mixture for the brown and apply this as a manual shade in all the deepest folds of all the cloth area. Some of the Mordor Urukai tunics lack a bit of definition so finding out where this needs to go is crucial to the overall look of the model. So take your time and just focus on where the light is hitting the model to know where to put these shades. Once you're happy with your recess shade, we're going to start adding Bane Blade Brown to the original base mix and start blocking out all the layer areas again. We want to give the leathers a really worn and dark look. We don't want to overwhelm them too much by adding bright browns and lighter browns, which would be more traditional and palatable where we're painting something that wasn't an orc or an uruk. But these leathers are old, they're worn, so we need to bring them up in a slightly washed out tone, which the Bane Blade Brown achieves very nicely. Now we're going to start adding Ushabti Bone to the previous layer mix and start applying the highlights. Again, making sure we leave the shade and the previous blocking layer stage showing in the deepest recesses 
to push that gradual tonal differentiation between the darker and lighter areas of all this rugged, ill-kept leather. We're going to continue to add a shabty bone for the next few highlight stages. You can apply as many stages here as you want to get a nice tone throughout all the leather. By the time we were finished we had no more than about 40-50% to of shabty bone to our original base mix. The shabty bone just further helps to reinforce the look of the leather we want by giving it a slightly washed out and ill kept look. Once you're happy with your highlighter stages, we're going to apply a very, very light glaze just to tie all these layers together with Agrax that are shade thinned down significantly with Lamy and Medium. Black Cloth. We're going to apply a wash to all the black cloth now with a 50 50 mix of Non Oil and Lamy and Medium. At this stage we'll also apply this to all the straps, the sword hilt and the hair. Now we're going to layer up the black cloth with a mix of Incubi Darkness, Abaddon Black and Ulthran Grey. Keeping the Ulthran Grey concentration fairly minimal at this stage to avoid overblowing the tone of the black cloth. We don't want to bring it up too quickly as that will just make the cloth look unnatural and detract from the overall effect that we want for the Zurich. Continue to add all thran grey for the next few layering stages in gradual increments, pushing the tonal difference between the lighter and darker folds of all the cloth. Now we're at a point where we've got between 30 and 40% Ulthran Grey in our mix and we're just continuing to layer up and just further pushing the definition between the darker and lighter folds of all the cloth by keeping our highlights a bit more targeted before the penultimate highlight stage. We're going to apply a very gentle extreme highlight of pure administratum grey just to make that black cloth pop a little bit more on the uppermost pronounced folds and edges of all the material. It should also complement very well with the look of the brown cloth once you're done. And as we did with the brown tunic, a final glaze with non oil just to tie all these layers together and make it look a little bit more rugged, dirty and old. Straps and belts. We're going to layer over the straps, the hilt and the hair now by increasing the amount of storm vermin fur in the original base mix to an approximate 50-50 split. Once you're happy with how this looks, apply an extreme edge highlight with pure storm vermin fur to the outer edges of all the belts, straps, the tips of all the hair follicles and the very edge of the hilt on the sword.
facing. We're going to be using a three part dry brush for basing our model Urukai. Using Mechanica Standard Grey, apply a base coat to all the sand on the model. Then apply a lighter dry brush over top with Dawnstone. Followed by a feather light dry brush of a Ministratum Grey over the top. Finally, the rim of the base was painted with dry bark. You can add some rubble to the base. You can use some cut up sprue, dry brush it with the same ilk as the base so it matches the Kirithungali look we're going for for this Uruk. And there you have it a ferocious, fearsome Mordor Urukai. Finished and ready for battle.